So I thought I had a chance to give you guys an update from what's going on here. And since Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, hasn't put out a video in a few minutes, he must have got some sleep or fell asleep or took a nap or something. So I figured I'd fill in for him. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Joel. I mean, that guy puts out some great videos and he puts out a ton of them. I don't know how he does it. I, I can't keep up with them. So, and I'm not even trying. But if, if you're not subscribed to his channel, subscribe because... Uh, a great guy and it's he's he's fun to watch so anyway i wanted to give you guys an update behind the scenes and the first thing i wanted to talk about is the maker front now the maker front printer i gave a review of it and <clears throat> i was pretty frustrated with the assembly process and some people had commented it's like i was a little too brutal for a company that gave me a free 3d printer but they did ask me to give an honest review and i hope they take it as constructive criticism to make it either better kit or more preferably sell it assembled because I've been using this thing now for a little while and I gotta tell you this thing prints amazingly well they said it would print as good as the fabricator mini and I can honestly say no it prints better I'm getting better prints out of this than my fabricator mini and I love the quality of the fabricator mini so it must be this metal frame because the rest of the pieces are pretty standard but it's put together in a proper way with this metal frame and it just it prints really really well and the mk8 which i was never super impressed with and stuff i've read it's printing really good so people that told me the mk is really good they were right um this particular case it prints well and i'm an e3 dv6 fan because i've had great results even with the clones that's in the Fabricator Mini. Um, but this this prints really good. So, uh, yeah, so thank you, Makerfront, for sending it to me. And I hope you took that as constructive criticism. And, and things like, you know, the 5 millimeter nuts that I complained about. I had some people comment that they've got a 5.5 millimeter socket in their, uh, their toolbox. And, you know, they work with electronics. They work with a lot of metric stuff. And so, yeah, so it's out there. Um, but my point kind of and i guess i didn't make it as clear as i probably should have is if you're going to sell this to you know real technical people who can program the arduino who have 5.5 millimeter sockets fine then this is fine but if you want to sell to more of the general masses the general public then it should be assembled and you should use nuts that they'll probably have a socket for or better yet put thumb wheels down here or some kind of adjustment knob rather than you know nuts that I get out get out a wrench and a uh, allen screw because you know if you you can say well I only have to adjust it once and then it's set no you, you're taking this glass off and every time you do that you potentially knock in these springs and just the vibration of this thing's printing is gonna move that even if it's a lock nut things are gonna loosen and you want to adjust it so so I still I stand by what I said um, but I also just wanted to give you guys an update that once it's assembled it's a really solid and very good printer so all those cheap kits out there on eBay that you know you use acrylic or um, even 3d printed parts in that I find it hard to believe they can print as good as this solid thing based on what I'm seeing but you know we'll see I got Joel Telling's old Wombat coming and that's got some 3d printed parts plus a metal frame so we'll see how that prints in comparison to this thing that'll be interesting so anyway I just want to give you guys an update on that I'm, I'm keeping it around the, the shop here because it's it's doing a great job in fact there's a, a whole chart that I've made for this is a reward from my patreon people and I've printed it on all my printers and this is the only one where the one millimeter hole which normally just gets covered up this is the only one when I hold it up to the light I can see through the one millimeter hole the fabricator mini once in a while would do that but this one every one of them i can see right through the, the hole just barely but that's how fine of print i'm getting with this thing and that's at a 0.2 layer height so i need to do a 0.1 so i'm happy with it just wanted to give you guys an update on that another thing people said you know after that review i'll probably never get another 3d printer sent to me not true because this is a version 1.5 of the Fabricator Mini. It was sent to me by Hobby King and for me to do a review and um, 
you know, just show it on my channel. So I'm up to date with the latest. Uh, they appreciate what I've done with promoting their stuff in the past and they, uh, they sent me this to try out so I could see the differences. And some of the differences I noticed right away is first of all, this is open. The old Fabricator Mini did not have this open. This was covered. Uh, a couple other things. The end rods, where the, where the rods stop here, these were screwed in before and now these snap in. But apparently they're holding it better because the rods used to slide back and forth and it, as it prints you would get a tick, tick, tick sound. These don't move. So that seems to be improved. The front here, there's a injection molded piece. This used to be stacked acrylic and then bolted together and then there was like a tie strap thing holding the rods. Um, that's changed. This is now injection molded holding the rods. Seems to be better. The um, drivers, the driver chips on the bottom now have heat sinks on them. So that helps. Although I never had problems with that before. Now some people have asked me what voltage I set my drivers to. There's a little potentiometer in the bottom here that you can set. And mine are all set to like 0.72 volts on my fabricator menu, which some would say is a little bit high. Uh, I think most people recommend 0.65 volts. And that's the voltage kind of correlates to the current that pumps through the steppers. But I've been running at 0.72 for hundreds of hours. And I, they do get warm, but I haven't had any failures. So I think I'm safe. So I'll probably adjust these, just check these, and see if they're in the same ballpark. But the heat sinks will help. Um, I don't know if the connectors for the LCD are fixed. They were reversed before, if you guys remember that. So I've had one person tell me they weren't revert. They they fixed it, and another person tell me they're still reversed. So I don't know until I I fix it. Now I did go ahead and print the base and the support for the LCD. The LCD is coming. I ordered it from Amazon through that same link that's on my uh, website, and so I'm waiting for that to come in. I printed the base on my DaVinci 1.0, and it actually shrunk just a little bit, so it's fitting tight. But it's actually good because now it'll stay on, but it gives me just a little bit of warping there. And then I got to clean the glue. It's got glue on the bottom that I got to clean off. This I printed on the uh, DaVinci Junior, so it's in PLA, and that came out really good and it snapped down really tight, fit really tight. So um, it's pretty much ready to go. One more thing I did notice too is that the extruder on the back used to be bolted right to the acrylic on the old one. Now they've got these offsets, these little plastic offsets. So I don't know if that, the motor heating up and then wiggling caused cracking on the back. I don't know, but they've got these offsets now. So that seems to be improved. So it looks pretty good. I'll, I'm going to give it, uh, run it through its paces, but I'm waiting for the LCD. I, I just want to install the LCD and then print for the SD card rather than just hook up the computer and print. Now, one other thing that Hobby King sent me, which I asked for, was uh, some filament from Kaleido. They're the same company that do the print right computers or print right printers, uh, 3D printers. Um, this is a wood filament. So they've got their own wood filament. They had it there on the website, the Kaleido wood filament, and it looks pretty good. It looks like it's got um, a texture that can actually be probably painted or uh, stained. I don't know if you saw Anthony at the hot end. He built something. He built a uh, like a Viking boat and then stained it. It came out awesome. So check that out on Anthony's site. And I, I think Angus at Maker's Muse have done some stuff. I don't know if he's done wood. I can't remember. But I know he's done a lot of different filaments, including painting filament. He painted it a certain color and then printed it, and it printed in that color. So um, check out his site, too, for, for anything new. I'm, I'm, I haven't done a whole lot of exotic filaments. And I'm just, I just haven't had the need for it for the stuff I do. But I did want some wood because I'm going to do some more cabinet knobs. Um, I never finished them because my wife commented she didn't really like the knob that I made. So it's my shop, but she works out here too. So I'm like, okay, I'll try to improve it. So style's not my strength, but I'm going to try some other designs. And, but I still want to print them in wood, and then I may try to stain it just to see how it comes out. So that may be a future uh, Film of Friday project, I don't know, or just an additional thing. So that's it. That's all I got for now. Um, I'll see you next time on Film of Friday.